On August 30th, 1813, an outpost known as Fort Mims, about 40 miles north of Mobile, Alabama, was attacked by over 700 Red Stick Indians, who were a warring faction of the Creek Nation. The Red Sticks are named for their red-painted war clubs that they carried into battle. This battle became recognized as one of the most horrendous battles in U.S. history. Brigadier General Claiborne, the militia commander in the Mississippi Territory, had visited all the forts in this region one after another, inspected them, and gave them careful instructions they needed to strengthen, cautioning their commanders everywhere to be wary of surprises and to avoid becoming careless. Knowing the Indians well, he knew they would attempt their first attack unexpectedly and bring as much force as possible. Major Daniel Beasley, commander of Fort Mims, had 140 militiamen under his command to protect the nearly 300 settler refugees crammed into the one-acre stockade. Fort Mims had became the only place of refuge for American settlers after the Creek Indian War had erupted in the summer of 1813. Beasley quickly started to disregard proper precautions given to him by General Claiborne. Despite having plenty of men to complete the tasks, he abandoned the construction of the new blockhouse and picketing line. Descriptions of life in the fort suggest that the commander lacked the essential qualities required for leadership, and particularly a sense of discipline. There was always revelry, card playing, and rowdy behavior among all the men in the fort. In the days leading up to the attack, a slave that was captured by the Red Sticks leader, William Reddy Weatherford, escaped and had returned to Fort Mims. The slave warned Major Beasley about an approaching Creek War Party. Major Beasley would then send out scouting parties, but no Indians were ever discovered. The soldiers at the fort returned to their idleness and revelry after calling the slave a liar. Creek War Chief William Reddy Weatherford was born the son of Charles Weatherford, a Scottish trader, and Sehoy, a Creek woman of the Wind Clan. From early on, William proved himself a great warrior. Red Eagle had quietly mobilized upward of 700 warriors within striking distance of the fort without Major Beasley's knowledge. Two slaves who had been watching over the livestock outside the fort before the attack ran to the fort in great fear and reported seeing Indians in the area. Major Beasley immediately dispatched a group of riders under the direction of a Captain Middleton. The slaves and Captain Middleton traveled to the location where the Indians were allegedly spotted. After discovering no Indians, Captain Middleton would return to the fort and announce that the report had been made in error. The slaves were accused of lying and one of them was tied to a post in the middle of the stockade and flogged. The other slave was temporarily saved by the intervention of his owner, but he was later charged again after Major Beasley threatened to expel him and his family from the fort if he continued his refusal to turn over his slave. It is recorded that the slave was waiting to be publicly flogged when the fort was attacked. The alarm given by the slaves was on the 29th day of August. The next morning, the slave who had been tied up and flogged was again sent out to guard the cattle and his companion was detained to receive his punishment. Red Eagle and his men were keeping watch over the fort, peering through the open gates that had been left open because of a buildup of sand at their base, which made it impossible to close them. It was midday on August 30th, and the fort's residents were eating dinner, unaware of the danger that lurked outside the gates. Red Eagle quietly advanced his lines towards the fort. He wanted the attack to be a complete surprise. By moving quickly toward the Indian line, he managed to get a location that was only 30 yards from the open gates before anyone inside noticed their approach. The few men who were nearby tried to close the gate, but it was already too late. The Indians charged in, and as, almost as soon as Major Beasley noticed them, he realized that they had already entered his defensive lines. Major Beasley was one of the first to engage the enemy and one of the first to die from his injuries. The battle was terrible. The Indians fought not to conquer the fort, but to kill every white person they could, including women, children, and infants. The fighting was hand-to-hand -hand combat. The only way that the soldiers would release their grip on the enemy was through death. The natives were falling as quickly as the whites were, if not even quicker, but they could afford this because they vastly outnumbered the fort's inhabitants. The fort gave way little by little. The numerous bands of white men were forced from one defensive position to another, engaging in combat along the way and blocking the attackers' advance at every turn. They fought fiercely, resisting the attackers' advance at every step. 
The settlers retreated into the larger cabins and set up a strong defense, but Red Eagle had his warriors unleash a torrent of flaming arrows on them. Those who fled outside were quickly clubbed to death while the rest were burned alive. The women and children inside the blazing homes could only pray and wait for a horrific fate as the Indians danced and yelled around them as the fire grew. The few survivors pierced the outer picketing and fled for their lives into the woods and towards the river. About 20 of them would have succeeded, and all the other occupants of the fort were slaughtered. With the exception of a family of half-breeds and a few black people who the Indians held as slaves. The Battle of Fort Mims, which some historians consider to be the most remarkable conflict between white men and Indians. This battle lasts for five long hours without stopping, which is very unusual for Indian warfare. Normally Indian attacks are quick and not prolonged, but they would have faced strong resistance at Fort Mims. The Fort Mims massacre was in retaliation for the attack on Creek Warriors by territorial militia at Burnt Corn Creek, Alabama on July 27, 1813. A force of about 8, 180 militia troops attacked a creek encampment near Burnt Corn Creek close to the modern boundary line between Conecuh and Escambia counties in Alabama. This conflict would lead to a full-scale war that was led by Major General Andrew Jackson that eventually resulted in the total defeat of the Creek Nation and the cession of 23 million acres of land in present-day Alabama and Georgia. On December 18th, Red Eagle surrendered to Jackson. The blood of our women and children that was recently spilled at Fort Mims calls for our vengeance. It must not call in vain, Andrew Jackson.